Hi everyone, my name is Isaac and today I'm going to be showing you my new TV and entertainment setup. Now, this setup is built off of five different things. The first thing is video, the next thing is audio, after that is entertainment, simplicity, and finally something a bit different, compactness, if that's even a word. It all starts out with the entertainment unit itself, and my choice is a bit non-traditional as it's actually a shelf. This is the IKEA Kallax shelf, and the reason I chose this has a bit of a story behind it. So I was in IKEA looking for some sort of TV unit for my new TV, and I saw a unit that I kind of liked, but then I realized this is going to take forever to build. There's all these different parts, it's absolutely massive, it just didn't make any sense to choose that unit. Then I thought, what if I take my IKEA Kallax shelf and flip it from vertical to horizontal, and it was a great decision. And it turns out the IKEA Kallax shelf is kind of the perfect budget TV and entertainment stand. It starts at only $46.99 USD for the single, and for the double, it's $67.99 USD. It's also on Amazon for a bit of a premium as well, if you just have to buy it on Amazon, you don't have any IKEA store nearby. It fits up to a 65 inch TV depending on the size of the TV feet and the weight of the TV itself, but keep this in mind, if the whole thing all falls apart, your TV gets wrecked, it's not my fault, I'm warning you right now, the shelf is not made specifically for TVs. It's something I kind of discovered, something I thought of, but that doesn't mean IKEA says you can do this. So be cautious, be careful, and take the risk if you want to. For me so far, it's been pretty solid. The actual storage boxes are big for most things and you can actually buy doors and drawers as well if you want to customize these boxes. You can see what I'm able to fit in my boxes here and there's plenty of space in these units. You can even buy the Drona fabric boxes as more storage or covers so you don't see any cables or the wall behind it and they're also good storage options as well. So despite my warning, this is still a good overall affordable budget choice for your TV entertainment unit. It works well, there's plenty of storage, it's affordable, easy to build, and I'm really happy with it so far. Up top is the TV itself. This is the brand new 2018 55 inch Hisense H9 Plus 4K TV with HDR. The TV is sort of in the affordable price range for 4K TVs, but still offers quality and features up there with some of the best and bigger brands. The design is attractive, the TV is well built and solid with metal feet and just a generally solid build for the TV. And the display portion is super slim as well with also very thin front display bezels. You have a bunch of HDMI and USB ports and the TV also features Bluetooth. The most important part of this TV though is of course the display portion itself and how it makes your content look on a daily basis. And for my testing so far, it totally delivers. It's a 4K panel with HDR10 and Dolby Vision built in, as well as 120Hz refresh rate and Hisense's ULED technology for a better picture and smoother motion. And so far, all content looks fantastic on this TV. Gaming, watching movies, whatever, it all just looks excellent. There's deep blacks, vibrant, beautiful colors, and solid brightness for an LED TV. I currently don't have a soundbar with this TV, but the audio from the Harman Kardon speakers is actually pretty solid and it's very surprising. Until I can actually get a soundbar, it definitely does the job temporarily. And actually running on the TV software wise is Android TV with Google Assistant built in accessed by pressing the remote's button. So it's not some janky smart TV OS, it's Android TV and it's good if you just don't want to buy a separate set top box. It totally works. So, so far my experience with this TV has actually been pretty great, and Hisense is definitely killing it and making some quality TVs at fairly affordable prices as well. Great job Hisense. Hooked up to the TV is my Xbox One X, my first gaming console in quite a while, and my last one was actually a PS2, so this is definitely a bit of an upgrade. The One X has been out for a little bit, so you kind of know all about it, but it is super powerful, plays games in full 4K with HDR10 support, and has a terabyte of storage. I have this D-brand carbon fiber skin on the console and the controller that adds a bit of a unique touch, prevents any fingerprints on the matte plastic, and this is more of a reserved skin, but you can totally go all out with this thing and make it totally stand out. Link down below, but in general the Xbox has a very minimal design, it's pretty compact, doesn't take up too much space for all the power in this console. The controller is also pretty sweet, it's iconic Xbox with tactile triggers, great buttons, and solid joysticks. 
My first console in quite a while, the experience is just very well designed and it plays the games I enjoy very well. And those games are, of course, Fortnite, it's 2018, Forza Motorsport 7, Rocket League, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I'm still discovering games that I like on this console as I'm pretty new to the Xbox experience. And here's a bunch of free game codes for you to download for yourself, and you just gotta be quick because those are gonna go pretty fast. While well, the Xbox One X is my main console for gaming, my main set-top box is the Apple TV 4K with HDR. I'm also fairly new to the Apple TV experience, but I could not be more impressed with the system itself. The design is fairly nondescript, and the remote is decent with Siri that's good for Apple TV commands, but doesn't have all the main iPhone Siri functions. But the software makes a huge difference with this set-top box and is the main star of this TV system. The interface is beautiful, extremely fluid and easy to learn, and all the apps are super well designed, like Netflix works great, HQ Trivia on Apple TV is kind of a dream come true, all the Apple stock apps work great as well, and if you have Apple AirPods, it takes a second to actually pair them to the TV box for personal audio listening. The performance with the Apple A10X chip is quite fluid as well, with only a few little delays or frame drops occasionally in the OS, but mostly a flawless experience. And if you have other Apple devices, all your content syncs up, like your movies, TV shows, your music, games, apps, all that kind of stuff, it all syncs to this device, and it's a very seamless experience. The Apple TV in 2018 is still an excellent choice for a TV box system. It has great performance and hardware, incredibly fluid and beautiful, well-designed software, and it has a great selection of apps, from movie and TV show apps to gaming apps and everything in between, it's still a good choice for a TV box. And for my main audio, I'm using the Sonos One smart speakers, and it's not the absolute best speaker system for a setup like this, but it's something I've personally been using for the last month or so, and really been enjoying. With the Apple TV, the speakers work through AirPlay, so you just select it from the menu, and basically just like that, the audio is sent to the speakers through Wi-Fi, and it's pretty much a one-to-one -one audio sync. So I have two of these things linked together and they just sound fantastic. They totally fill up a room and I eventually hope to actually pick up the Sonos Play Bar in the future for more of a TV kind of sound bar setup. But so far, they sound incredible. I could not recommend these speakers even more. And the main reason why I actually bought these speakers is that AirPlay 2 support. So from your iPhone, your iPad, your MacBook, one tap away and you have excellent audio coming from these speakers. They also work with Android, of course, as well with the Sonos application, and they even feature Siri, Alexa, and Google Assistant potentially in the future, so you have every virtual assistant built into these speakers just like that. These are an excellent choice for audio and some of the smart features as well. I also have a little Google Home Mini kind of hidden in my setup as well for Google Assistant, any quick questions, and of course I love that continued conversation feature, that's what mainly keeps me using Google Assistant over some of the competition. Even though my TV has it built in, the TV isn't always on so I can't just say the hot word, it's great to actually have the Google Home Mini in this setup. I also have a bunch of books and magazines about things I personally like, like design, architecture, furniture, tech, those type of things. I don't really read these books and magazines too often, but they fill the shelf and add a really nice touch. And also for some decoration, I have some little action figures like this Mr. Meeseeks from Rick and Morty made by Funko Pop, and the one and only Canoopsy action figure in the world made by my great friends over at TELUS as a little gift. Basically I got myself scanned in this huge 3D scanning machine, I got some of these cool animated GIFs, and TELUS gave me this as kind of a little bit of a surprise, this Canoopsy action figure, and it's the coolest thing ever, it's so unique, it's just awesome. So this has been a look at my TV entertainment setup. I'm always adding things, always subtracting things, always changing things, and I want to hear your feedback about this setup in the comments down below and how to make it even better. So let me know, and thank you for watching.